Hi friends, this is Calpun Piso. I'm going to explain today, based on facts, because you know I don't bullshit, I tell it like it is, uh, the origins of Palm Sunday, the Christ psychosis infected uh, celebration, and uh, April Fool's Day, also due to Christ psychosis which is celebrated today, a Sunday, April 1st, 2012. Of course, this is a baton of command of a, with the symbol of the sun, the swastika, from the Roman Empire, of the Lord and Savior, Julius Caesar the Christus. And that's where Christianity came from, also, adopted by Christian Hitler that unified the religion in Germany, which were Lutheranism, Catholicism, universal uh, religion of the Christians, and the Roman uh, uh, Germania pagan uh, religion into one. He called it Nazism. Brilliant. But here it is. These are the... the uh, the roots of all of this nonsense. Remember, you believe in God in this 20, uh, 21st century, you are a theotar, you have a problem with your brain. Because the brain is the creator of the God delusions and thoughts and bizarre mythological beliefs at the root of all religions and also of disorders like schizophrenia. Sorry, no God. Keep in mind where evolved mutated primates that create the bizarre mythological beliefs of God with our brains. When the brain malfunctions, you believe in God and you are a theotard. Well, uh, as we know, since ancient times, uh, ancient cultures didn't know how to keep track of time, counting months, days, years, or anything like that. Of course, everything was in the stars because they need to, to plant the crops and know about how the seasons work. So, uh, in ancient Egypt, they used the solar calendar. Sun was a god, 365 days. Amazing. Calculations were amazing. Amazing. But to them, the stars and everything was gods. Uh, then any civilizations were the same way, even in the Americas. Uh, then, of course, in the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire adopted and improved a lot of the a lot of the beliefs and science and everything from different civilizations, including their own religion. There was many, many gods and tolerant and all that. That was amazing. That was the reason why they were so successful. And um, so anyway, uh, other cultures um, depend on the moon for a calendar to keep track of time and days and all that. And even in the Roman Empire, uh, they use, um, see, counting the days was extremely important for religious ceremonies. Everything was, everything was religious. Everything was the gods. Everything. If you farted, that was the gods did it. If you had a kid, the gods did it. If you suffered disease, the gods did it. If you had bad crops, the gods did it. You know, all that. All that. So they're trying to read the signs for the gods by the flight of birds and things that happen, the wind, the seas, and all that. Everything was the gods. That's just you have blood sacrifice in the old cultures. You know. But uh, in, uh, in the Julius Caesar's time, you know, the man was incredibly intelligent. He changed the calendar, 30, or 365 days, but he had discrepancies. That's all things there. And then uh, in other cultures, it was the moon calendar. So that's the reason today we have different variations of, um, of the calendar. You know, the Arabs have their own year, the Muslims have their own year, the Hindus have their own year, everybody have their own year. <laughs> so all the festivals change on time. But a lot of Arab, they, are, they have the roots on the same type of thing that happened 3,000, 4,000 years ago. In the Roman Empire, uh, for instance, they have 10, 10 months, beginning with 10 months. So you have uh, even the month of September, the seventh month, uh, and so forth, you know, the 8th, October the 8th, and 9th month, November and December was the 10th month. Well, I mean, the religion, a lot of these things, uh, with the advent of Christ psychosis in the 4th century and later on, you know, uh, they kept the idea of the month 
of the old Roman calendar, especially the Puritans, because they, everything was Puritan and everything went, went based on the Bible, which is a book of mythologies with no reality at all, a bunch of fairy tales, and they tried to to, uh, to see what the time, you know, what the calendar was, and actually it was 10, 10 uh, months in the year, like the old calendar. So actually in the Roman times, Mars, the month of Mars was the beginning of the year, and also uh, developed into uh, April. That was also a celebration of the uh, beginning of the year. You know, discrepancies. Well, the Puritans, after a uh, gay King James, uh, made <laughs> the religion of the empire of the I mean of, of England uh, with creating his own Bible, the King James Version. A lot of the Puritans said they didn't like the idea and they fled to America, Mayflower, and of course uh, they had their stupid beliefs and old mythologies, and they kept insisting that the beginning of the year was in April, April 1st. So they celebrated the beginning of the year April 1st. The other Christ psychotics came from Europe. They kept the 12 month and everything correct, uh, the Gregorian calendar, then they, they called these people fools. So that's the beginning of the April Fool's Day. Now let's go with the Roman history. To understand Palm Sunday, we must go back to the Roman triumphs, where the, uh, the, uh, uh, the gods, emperors, there were also priests uh, where, and generals. There were also priests were giving triumphal processions when they uh, defeated the enemy. And it was done in Rome. And what they used to actually greet them were palm, palms or, or um, um, branches of the uh, evergreen. Because uh, these this trees, for them, they were, uh, you know, for the ancients, it was amazing that they never died. It's a symbol of immortality. They survive winter. And here in HBO Rome, I will show you where they depict the triumph of the son of Venus, uh, Julio Caesar, the Christ. Because Jesus Christ is actually a title. It is a mutation of Archereus Megistus, and Archereus Megistus is a title in Greek that means great builder of bridges, anointed savior, etc., etc., etc. It's a title, just like Pontifex Maximus, which means in Latin, great builder of bridges. And the builder of bridges were all carpenters, or sacred carpenters. See, because you, you have a bridge between God and, uh, and humans the gods and humans. And also it's noted though, Julius Caesar, the Christus, the son of Venus, actually built a bridge over the Rhine River in 10 days. The Germanic tribes were petrified, and it was a psychological warfare of uh, Julius Caesar, the Christus, when he built the bridge in 10 days, crossed the Rhine River, looked around at <laughs> all the German tribes were, what? <laughs> and then he went back and dismantled it. An act of a god. But here is examples of triumph from HBO Rome. And you see, Julius Caesar uh, actually had a, a triumph that lasted four days. Amazing. Of course, here it doesn't depict that, but I will show you some stuff. I don't know. I think it's too purple. I want to suggest purple without actually wearing it. It will look less loud in direct light. What do you think? Jupiter in light. Resemblance is uncanny. I want to suggest purple without actually wearing it. Well, as you can see, he is saying that it is too purple. His robes. You know, something like this color. And see this? All this purple, all this vestum. You know where that comes from? All of that comes, the dye comes from uh, Hexaples trunculus, it's a mollusk. Okay, and this dye is very interesting because uh, uh, 
<laughs> there, there was an industry uh, for 3,000 years. They actually, uh, from Crete, and uh, they, they actually uh, found out that the dye of this mollusk, uh, it, when you, you dye the wool with that, uh, it creates this, uh, this uh, purplish and blue color. But see, what happened is that when you dye the mollusk in, um, uh, on the sunlight, it creates, the dye creates a bluish, heavenly bluish color, which is also used in Judaism. See? And that's the reason that you don't have to eat shell fish, I believe, because it's, you know, they didn't want to kill the, the uh, they made it forbidden because it was just something sacred that they used, the priests used. That, I believe that's the reason. And in Judaism, it's a sacred blue, Tehalet. But it, it all comes from the Roman Empire, everything. But uh, Julius Caesar, uh, the emperor, when this is dyed in darkness, when it's not sunlight, the dye, it dyes the wool a purple color. So that's the reason all these colors were sacred in the Roman Empire. And he was actually a Christus, a divine and that's the reason his sacrifice uh, would uh, mutate into the uh, Jesus Christ blood sacrifice and save him with blood uh, that uh, developed the, uh, the uh, Abraham, so-called Abrahamic religions. Dressing up, playing being God. <laughs> playing. I'm not playing. This is not a game. As you wish. It is not a game. Life resemblance is uncanny. And another interesting thing is that Julius Caesar was the Christus was considered a god, and he merged, he merged with the different gods in different uh, provinces of the empire, and he merged with Jupiter. So, in other words, when you have a temple of Jupiter, you you know, hundred years later, uh, Jupiter was equated with uh, with. Uh, uh, Julius Caesar, the father in heaven, the Christus. So the name Apollo, the name uh, Huramasta, the name of, just the name of a god, what, whatever you want to call it, it was also brings up in the mind of the ancients the image of Julius Caesar, the sacrificed Christus. So he was the god of many names. And you know, and in ancient times, you had to get prepared for a big triumph, a big, a big spectacle. You know, it's amazing. It's a spectacle like that. And here in uh, HBO room, uh, these ladies are getting prepared. You know, Atia and all that, getting prepared for the uh, for the triumph, which it happened in ancient times. Jeez. And you know, this is kind of interesting, a little trivia for you. Uh, you know, they use in their, in their, as a cosmetic, right in here, you know what they use as a cosmetic? They use the dropping of pigeons, of birds. And you know one thing? A bird, a pigeon, a dove, was the sacred bird of Venus, the vagina in the sky. The mother goddess, in other words, Julius Caesar the Christus was the darling of Venus, which is Maya, Virgin uh, Mary, Isis, etc., etc. But this, that's what the cosmetics were used. It was pigeon droppings. And Max Factor, you know, the cosmetic uh, mogul of the uh, 1920s, went to Arizona and he was collecting the droppings of bats to actually create the cosmetics. So when you put cosmetics in your in your faces, in this white and all that stuff, so remember you're using shed of birds and bats. Well do you know one thing in this in HBO series, a lot of people don't understand this, but this is the Tower of Bolium. It was very common. It's a practice of sacrifice with blood, the blood of a bull that was sacred. And uh, many animals' blood were sacred, but the bull especially, Taurus, is actually equated with Mithras. 
and with many, many gods in ancient times. So the blood was also, you know, they didn't understand how the, the bulls will work. They were gods to them. They had no idea they were bovines, you know, and all that. They had no idea in, in those ancient times. But here, uh, this is very accurate, uh, Octavius, which was also an augur and a priest, you know, a pontiff. You know, and it's also the son of God because, uh, you know, Julius Caesar was considered a father in heaven, the living God, uh, uh, darling of Venus. So in this case, it's going to be the Taurobolion, which is very, very common in, in, in all the practices because the Roman Empire, like ancient empires, were all religious. Religious was everywhere. The gods were everywhere. Everything was religious and a sacrifice and blood and just name it. They couldn't even take a shit without taking a prayer, you know, of many gods. Not one, many gods. But in this case, you see what's going to happen to Julius Caesar before the triumph. Now, of course, it is a speculation, but, you know, it, it, it actually makes sense because all these practices were religious and they considered blood sacred. If historians, archaeologists, etc., etc., don't understand because they don't connect the dots, is that the bull, Taurus, originated as a god, like Mithraism and, and the Tower Volume in ancient Rome and many civilizations, the bull was sacred, it originated from, from the cradle of religious psychosis. 5,000 years ago, Egypt, Hathor the cow, and uh, the bull with the horns. So the horns became equated with the gods, with Taurus, and also represented rays of the sun god, because the bull was also a god, because of Hathor and the manifestation of Osiris, thus mutated into Serapis. The Apis bull and Osiris, Serapis. Also, you know, uh, the, uh, the Romans, we adopted every, every, every little single ritual a religion from all over the empire with the many, many gods and gods, making it very, very tolerant, uh, you know, use all those symbols of the sun and including all the Torah volume and the blood. And uh, also like in, in the, the later uh, mythologies of Christianity, like, uh, like Moses. Uh, Moses is a title that means it's actually son of. And like the Ramses, Ramses II, the great pharaohs, they would know their names. It was a title. Ra is the sun god, Moses, son of, so Ramoses means son of the sun god, Ra. So, the bull was sacred. Moses is a title like Jesus Christ, come from Archaeus, it means the title of head priest. It's just almost like a personification of the United States of America, which is Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam doesn't exist, it's not a real person, but it represents America. It's a personification of the United States of America. The Romans use that all the time, even personify emotions, love, luck, old age, etc., etc., etc. That's what the. Uh, and in the Renaissance, there was a mistranslation where he says uh, it's uh, more difficult uh, a rich man to pass through, to, to, uh, to gain heaven, or to be in heaven, uh, it is impossible to gain heaven to, than for a camel to go through the, uh, through the uh, eye of a needle. But see, it's mistranslation. The Bible is full of mistranslations. Everything in mistranslation and mythology is garbage. All of it. So actually, it, it means, is, is it mistranslation of God, I mean of a, of a rope, and uh, a camel, see, it's actually a rope. Uh, it's easier for a rope to go through the eyes of a needle than a rich man to uh, enter heaven. It's not camel, Mr. Slesham. The same thing with Moses came from the top of the mountain uh, with, a, with, with horns from God of light. Well, they are no horns. Uh, they are rays. And this is a Mr. Slesham into rays and horns. And that's the reason you see in the Renaissance, uh, images of Moses is depicted with horns. That's what happens. Religious is mental illness. It's a creation of the malfunctioning brain. We know that in this 21st century, thanks to the science of neurology. There is only one of many samples I have of Moses with horns. Here it is. 
Here the Son of God, Octavius, is going to bless his uh, father, the living God, Julius Caesar Echristus, with the sacred blood of a bull, the baptism of the Torah volume. And as you can see here, Octavius, the son of, oh, he was actually the grandnephew of Julius Caesar, the Christus. Uh, so here you can see him wearing, covering his head. And the reason you cover your head is because you trap the air. The air was the soul. Because nobody, uh, people in ancient times had no idea what the air was. It was an invisible force. You clouds, the stars, everything floating in the air. I had no idea. You went like, what is this? So this is the soul. You breathe your soul. That's where soul comes from. They had no idea they had a, uh, what the lungs were for or anything like that. They had no idea they had a brain to create thoughts with. You know, so every, you, know, you have to cover your head to trap the air. And any religious ceremony, you cover your head for all the practice because you, you trap in the spirit world. There are four sacred liquids that you can annoy the persons with. Either blood, semen, uh, milk, or the olive oil of Athena's sacred tree. Olive oil. Now, in this case, and this is a very accurate portrait, is that uh, this is Versigenterix. And it was taken to Rome, you know, kept there in prison for in, in ropes. Because the again, there is no evidence the Romans used crucifixion as punishment. Zero evidence. None. It's mistaken the mistranslation as a Christian invention. You know, the uh, Christ psychotic infected imbeciles. But anyway, uh, they the way you treat the enemy is with the ropes. And everything was religious. It was a sacrifice. So what they're going to do is take Versigenterix and sacrifice him to the gods. And the priests have to order the execution. And he is held with ropes. Ropes. And his symbols. All his symbols. Versigenterix was defeated at Alicia. And that was considered a miracle performed by the living god Julius Caesar, the magnificent Christus, the performer of miracles. Ropes is a symbol of humiliation. You know, a, a criminal is never put in a cross, which is a symbol of the sun. I never is going to be elevated like a god in, in so everybody can see it as a god. It is absolutely ridiculous and it's ignorance of the Christ psychotic infected imbecile that had no idea about history. The spoil of wars were also uh, depicted and carried in tropaeons, which is like a cross with, uh, with the armor uh, and, and also the slaves on the bottom and the spoils of war. See that? Palms. Palms. They used to use all that in all the triumphs to, res to greet the, uh, the triumphant priest general or God savior emperor as Julius Caesar the Christus. And this kind of a parade, these triumphs were uh, imitated by many, many conquerors. Everyone imitated that, including uh, Christian Hitler, that uh, created, uh, you know, the uh, uh, melted three religions into one, which was uh, Catholicism, Lutheranism, and the Roman Empire uh, state religion. He adopted many of the symbols that you can see, very, thus very creating Nazism. As you can see, Ulysses of the Christus, his face covered in blood. And that's not, it's actually logical, and it's been depicted in a lot of epigraphy and all that, and you see that, that it's actually true. It's not uh, something that is invented or made up by the, the makers of uh, HBO Rome. No, it's actually based on, on real things. Again, again, there is no such a thing as crucifixion as punishment. It didn't exist. You, you, if you want to uh, torture somebody, you put ropes on it and you stamp on them, you, you, you uh, tie them into a tree, and you, if they're important, you chop their heads off and you put them on pikes so everybody can see the people that you defeated. Also, this here, this oak leaf is a crown of thorns. It's from acantha leaves. In the acantha in, uh, in, uh, in Greek mythology is, uh, is a, a nymph that rejected 
the advances of the sun god, Apollo, and uh, she scratched his face. So Apollo got all pissed off and turned Acantha into a thorn bush. Thus, the idea of the crown of thorns. It's a different type of crown. So it's the, the Olympic crown and the oak leaves and all that. But in this case, it's the crown of thorn, which represents the sun god. This is what equivalent to the today to the kings that they wear that that spy crown, which is nothing but the representation of the sun god. In the back, you have a servant that is actually keep telling him. Keep telling these people, because, you know, when you, everybody tells you you're a god and you're important, and you start thinking that you're a god. So this person in the back, uh, a slave or an aide of uh, Ulysses at the Christian, was telling the, the, the emperors and the conquerors and the generals, you are not a god. Your shit stinks. You are immortal. Keep that in mind. Don't let it go up to your head. And keep repeating all the time, which is brilliant. It was beautiful. Also, the Corinthian capitals are adorned where Acantha leaves represent the sun god Apollo. And of course, here are the flamens. All the flamens, there are 15, the Queen de Chambiri, the, uh, the, of the senators that were all the study, the religion and everything of the, of the, uh, of the empire to the many, many, many gods, and they were in control of all the gods of the empire. It was the, the senate of Rome was in control. And the Julius Caesar was the also, or the uh, the head priest, or Achilles Megistos, in this case of Julius Caesar, you know, the divine entity, and of course, everything culminated in his in the blood sacrifice, and that's what did it. That and the appearance of the comet, that's what uh, turned Julius Caesar into a living God, existing God, and his title of Archelaus Megistos or Jesus Christus, adopting a person of his personality of its own, and becoming the Jesus Christ we know today in all the religious Abrahamic religions and many others. Here are the uh, 15 priests of the Roman Empire, which were also senators, the Queen Duchem Viri. And they were the priests of the many gods of the empire, under the direction of the Pontifex Maxim, which is, was the emperor god. And also, keep in mind, everything is uniform. Everything, like the Catholic priests and the Pope and Everything is symbolic and it has a meaning in the, relig in the religion, in the rituals. But in this case, there were many, many gods, not only one. And it's very, very important. All the things, the epaulets, eventually the generals of the United States Army wear epaulets. They all come from, it's all mutations. Everything. These the ribbons that float in the, uh, in the spirit world represents the gods and the birds and the wings. Everything is symbolic of the gods of the religion of the Roman Empire. One important thing that established, was established by Ulysses at the Christians was the Clementia Cesaris. In other words, forgiving the sins of people, forgiving your enemies, turn the other cheek. That was essential in the piety of the Roman emperors. And Julius Caesar started this. Also, you know, you, you have all of them. Uh, this year, the, the uh, uh, wife of Julius Caesar the Christus, which is Calpurnia which is the daughter of Lucius Calpurno Piso Zisoninus, my name's sake. Flamen, waiting the orders. Now you see the symbol? And this is, of course, this symbol is a symbol, you know, from ancient times, is a, you give the orders, but eventually, uh, in reality, is nothing but holder of a penis. It was a sacred god. And when you hold it and it's curved, uh, you have it like this. And you hold the penis like this, so it's curved. It's actually a symbol of benediction that the Catholic Church uses, but it's a symbolic of the invisible creator God, which is uh, Lord and Savior that I call it penis Christ. But that's what the Rome, this is very accurate that the, uh, the uh, uh, Roman emperors, the divine emperors, use the symbol. And the evidence for all to see is in Egyptian hieroglyphs. Uh, when you kneel down, you're worshiping the penis, uh, of, especially of the pharaoh. It's an act of creation. And you use your hand to masturbate and actually spell the semen or milk. And in Roman times, this symbol was a symbol of divinity. When you have the two, it's just like holding your penis when you urinate. And you see that in uh, Christian epigraphy. All over the place you see that. The mother Venus, you know, with the sun 
the Son of God. And then you have all that in all Christian and in many, many, uh, the epigraphy of many religions, you have this symbol. And uh, it is very obvious. Even the President of the United States, which is, which is like a Christos Emperor, is using his hand to bless. Also, they will use this, which is the hand of God. The God attuned the masturbated, the God uh, uh, making, and the, the hermaphrodite God making it create uh, uh, the universe and all populations, Egyptian beliefs. Uh, here you have the hand side with this in all uh, many uh, Middle Eastern uh, beliefs with the eye of Horus. It's very obvious as the hand that must obey the God. You can even see the fish here, which is nothing but the Vesica Pisces, which is the female vagina. So everything has symbolism and the rope. So criminals were, were punished by impelling them or strangling them. Notice the pigeons. The pigeons are symbolic of Venus, the mother goddess, the mother of Julius Caesar the Christus. Notice this pattern. The pattern. Actually, this pattern is wrong. It should be the swastika, as in the Arapakis Agustai. Here they put the Greek key. This actually is wrong, because the, the swastika represents the, the uh, sun god, the race of the sun god, which would be better to put a swastika. Remember, all the celebrations of of this 2012, the celebration of, of Holy Week, of Passover, Good Friday, Easter, and the resurrection of, of some be Jesus are nothing more than due to the psychosis of God belief, a neurological disorder, since religion is organized schizophrenia. Enjoy the truth with a healthy brain, in other words, an atheist one. Watch it, the